Hi, it's Paul Anderson, and this is Life Science Disciplinary Core Idea 1D on information processing. It's really your brain learning about itself. So how do we teach this progression in schools? Well, in the lower elementary grades, we want to talk about signals in our environment and how they're picked up by organs that we have. And so how do you sense light? Students that do fairly well that we use our eyes to do that, or we pick up sound with our ears. They might not know how we sense temperature, uh, but they probably know how we sense touch and that's going to be through our skin and so that's a good place to start this idea that our environment has signals that we can somehow receive. Uh, don't neglect plants though. Plants can also receive signals from their environment. They can show what's called phototropism where they can grow towards light without muscles, without nerves, without any of that. And they do that through the expansion of their cells. And so this idea that plants and animals can sense their environment is a great place to start. As we move forward in elementary, you want to start talking about specific signals, and then where do they go? So where does vision go? Where does hearing go? Well, basically all of them are connected using nerves or neurons to our brain. And so that information is going to be gathered throughout our body, but it's all going to be moving towards our brain so we can make sense of it. And the lower parts of your brain process that information. So a good analogy is like a switchboard operator, that information comes in and then they have to push it to the right part of the brain. And so we're going to move that out into our brain. Now, integration is probably too big a word uh, when you're in third grade. But this idea that the brain is making sense of that information is a good place to start. As we move forward, we also want to explain that it's not just one way, that the brain is then sending signals back to the rest of the body. So it's sending an action back to the body. Sometimes that's immediate, like a reflex. If I touch a hot pot, I'm going to move my hand away really quickly. But also some of it's going to be calculated behavior, so learn behavior. So right now I'm using my brain to figure out what I'm going to say next. Also we can use that information to store um, retrievable information inside our brain in, in circuits within our brain or connections within our brain. And so at the elementary level that's where you want to start with. It's this idea of the importance of the brain as a receiving and then also a responding organ. As we move forward into middle school, we want to talk about what those signals actually are. And they come in three general types, electromagnetic, mechanical, and then chemical signals. And so could you pause the video and figure out which of these uh, five fit with the uh, electrochemical, mechanical, and chemical? Well, let me, let me show you. It's this. Electromagnetic uh, material is going to be picked up your, by your eyes. Mechanical information is going to be sensed by your skin and your ears, and then chemical through your nose and through your tongue. So let's look specifically at each of those. So how does your eye work? Basically, light's going to come in through a pupil. You're going to focus that using a lens on the retina, which is in the back of your eye. And different specialized neurons are going to pick up those electromagnetic signals. And so that light coming through your eye is going to be sensed by uh, modified neurons in the back of your eye. What about mechanical? So right now, when you hear me, Basically, on the inside of your ear, every part of the outside of your ear is funneling that sound, but on the inside of the ear in a cochlea, you're going to have these tiny little hairs that are vibrating, and that vibration is sending a signal through neurons to your brain that are, that are giving you different sounds. And when I talk really low, that's going to vibrate different hairs than when I talk really high. And so um, that's mechanical receptors, but that's also the way our skin works. The way if I push on my skin, I can feel that is that we're mechanically changing a receptor. And that's sending a signal to the brain. And then we have chemical reception as well. And so when you smell something, what's going on? Well, the chemicals are actually moving up into your nose and they're hitting these receptors on the inside of your nose. They're actually gathering these chemicals and there's a fit between the two and that sends a signal to your brain. Same thing with taste, that there are chemicals that are being received and you can see there's little hairs on our taste bud as well. And that's sending a signal to our brain saying that's what this taste was. As we move into high school, we want to get more into the brain and talk about the different parts of the brain. First of all, we should say that there are different parts of the brain. Uh, there are regions of the brain that do different things. And so as that information moves in, visual information is going to be pushed to what's called the visual cortex when we make sense of that. Um, auditory is going to move to a different part of the brain. We also have a somatosensory. Basically what that means is that when you get touched 
or you sense information on different parts of your body, it's going to go to an area in your brain so you know where that is coming from. And we're going to have more nerves from organs in our body that are highly sensitive. So the end of your fingers are going to have a lot of neurons and that's going to take up a lot of per, uh, regions in your brain as opposed to like sensory systems on, this, on your back. You don't have as many neurons coming from that. And then on the other side, we have the motor cortex. And motor cortex is basically going to send signals out to the rest of the body that tell my body what to do, to tell these fingers to move or my hands to clap. And then we have what's called the prefrontal cortex, and that's where some of our emotions are going to sit, and that's how we um, respond to environments based on that. And so these are different areas of the brain, but we're just starting to really figure out how they all work. Um, you can think of it like these circuits or these connecting circuits within your brain that give us memories and also give us emotions. And they're used by animals and humans to seek reward, to avoid punishment, to develop fear, to form attachment. But the big thing is that you understand that the brain and the nervous system are integrated, that all of this information is coming in, we're processing it, we're sending signals out, and the whole thing works together. And I hope that was helpful.